Okay, so somebody spent the five hundred dollars, uh, and they decided what we get to do with the Therese Nielsen. So um, we're flushing it down the toilet. So here's here it is. Just so everybody knows, this is real. This is not a a joke. Um, we at Next Bridge honestly believe that trans rights are human rights, and fuck Therese Nielsen. So um, into the potty it goes. Do, 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 do. There she is. There she goes. Might need more than one flush if it does. We'll sit here all fucking day and do it. Nope, it's gonna need one more flush. Hold on. Let's get one of these real quick. Make sure we give it a nice little push. There we go. There she is. There she goes. Let's try one more time. Nope, she needs one more push. Okay. There we go. Make sure we get her nice and in there. This is the opposite of fucking around. If she doesn't go this time, well, somebody's gonna have to use the body and just, you know. There we go. All right, so thank you, Jason Cadmir. That was uh, that was on you, and Jason said to flush it, so there it goes. Uh, have a good one, we'll see you soon. We are live at Magic Fest Seattle, whatever they're called now. This, this is a Grand Prix, it's a Grand Prix. It's still a Grand Prix, with one Gerald Thompson. And he is uh, altering his force of wills. Correcting me. Correcting, correcting them. I have not played Legacy in quite some time, but uh, tomorrow there's a Legacy MCQ, and you know, gotta get your deck ready. Yeah, exactly. Pre preparation at its finest. So today I'm going to recount how, why Teresa Nielsen became the boogie man, or boogie woman, boogie lesbian of Magic the Gathering and why people are actively destroying her cards, in particular Force of Will and Guru Lands. It started with Autumn. Uh, before there was an Autumn, there was no destruction or attacks on Teresa Nielsen's livelihood and she was just this really kind artist and she followed some people and that was a big deal but that itself went away. She apologized. She stopped following those people and you no, know, all I think she basically gave in. Now we can ask: Is that good? Is that bad? But regardless, uh, that is what had happened, and um, yeah, that's just what happened. So she apologized and said, "I remember reading the post, treading lightly here." And recently, she on her website, which I'm not going to post here because I want you to go to her website and give her some support and some love. You know, people have been contacting her and she's been doing them and they're buying her artwork. Hey, you don't need to support me. You can support Teresa and that will, you know, help me support. So I'm going to buy some of her artwork too. And uh, obviously once, once the flood comes, you know, is a little bit less. Um, she's doing very good business right now. So in a few months, I think I'll be very interested in owning something that is more original or custom as I can afford it as I come into more money due to my business being successful. Okay, back to the autumn and the Knights of Autumn. So there's not many Knights of Autumn anymore. You can go on Twitter. The Knights of Autumn have all, have, instead of their hashtag with Knights of Autumn, their hashtag is now Black Lives Matter or hashtag me too after Noah Bradley. Autumn, who was very, very good at magic, I just uh, researched, is not even in the top eight as of the recording of this video of the MPL. And there's only 23 of them. I don't know what happened to the other 11, but uh, there's only 20 MPL members or 23. Like that's, I also found that kind of weird. And I was like, where's the next page? Well, that's such a weird number, but I think a lot of the uh, members, the previous members, may not be playing Magic anymore or may not be signed to your contract or maybe they're called rivals now or something. 
but there's not 32 of them anymore. So I found that interesting. And Autumn is not in the top eight in 2020. Autumn used to be by far the point leader in MPL points um, by a great margin. And many of people considered her like the best Magic player. I considered her at one time the best Magic player. But since the winning Mythic Championship number two, she has not performed, or non-binary has not performed well. And I think that's why, and when I proposed this, a lot of Knights of Autumn attacked me attacked my business. I've already gone over this a million times. Um, they, they called me a turf, even though I'm not a female or a feminist. So like a lot of them didn't even understand what turf meant, right? So, you know, a trans exclusionary rights feminist. And they were like, oh, you're such a turf. You're such a turf. You're such a turf. And I was like, I, I don't think I can be a turf because I'm, I'm a white not, I almost said I was a white cis male because I just say that I use that term. No, I'm an Asian cis male. Wow, well, gosh. I almost said I was a white. I almost, wow. Wow. Big wows. But anyway, when someone like Sifka, who is a really respected and good Magic player with a much longer history of playing Magic than Autumn, says, I don't think we can create better society by spreading hate or causing drama. He gets roasted by Tolarian Community College and friends and the Knights of Autumn. Right now, the Knights of Autumn have become uh, Rachel's Knights. The Knights are Rachel. Rachel is, of course, Noah's wife. And a lot of them have are, you know, are being her Knights now to defend her against danger from the mobs, as they call it, as you can see. And they're, they're all basically white cis males. And they all, you know, get their shields up. Or on the Black Lives Matter movement, which obviously Tolarian Community College has been criticized for not having African-American guests on, which then he had to apologize. Merrill has been criticized, which then he apologized by saying that he grew up in the 1970s, which I don't know, and he has to, apparently he has to be re-educated. These are his words, not mine. And now we are in this, uh, I feel like we're in like some type of book some type of like 1984 book. And it's really interesting because trans rights and, um, you know, athletes, that used to be a very big deal. You know, should a male to female athlete be allowed to compete? And a lot of people came out and said yes. Some people said no. And that was a big deal. Um, so in Magic, when you go from male to female, do you have some type of advantage over the male? Like a lot of times people will say no, but would you get more sponsorships? Would you get the, a special invite, for instance? Um, if you were just a white cis male, would you get that special invite over a person who recently became trans? The answer is no. Um, you can look at the numbers, you can look at the statistics, you can look at the data, and you can compare the number of trans individuals in the Magic the Gathering who play Magic the Gathering versus not uh, cis individuals and you can see how many trans individuals got special invites and then you can compare the percentages, right? Or you can say, hey, in the US population, there are X amount of, and I've done this exercise with you and the Knights of Autumn have attacked my business. They have attacked me personally and I don't give them an inch. I don't apologize to them. Because I know, and just like puker trade, I knew all I had to do was outweigh. And there's some puker defenders even today. You do know that your inflation is like outrageous, right? Like out of control inflation. It's not a hundred puker points for a dollar anymore, guys. But I just had to wait. So Tolarian Community College, I attacked puker trade. And then Tolarian Community College, Weds and friends said, no, no, puker trade's the best. And I knew one day I would be able to feast on Pico Trades' corpse. This, I think Pico Trades is a deer or something. And that's what I do now. I, anytime I can take a shot at Pico Trade, I do. And I knew that about Frank too, that one day Frank would make a mistake. And then I would be able to feast on his corpse too. Sounds very um, nightmarish, but I mean, this is what I enjoy. And I know one day when soon... 
So right now we have Black Lives. So we were on the trans train, if you will, uh, around November 9th um, when we were doing, doing a whole let's attack Theresa Nielsen. But then Black Lives, then the COVID happened, then the Black Lives Matter happened, then the hashtag Me Too happened, or I guess the hashtag Me Too happened to Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein before, but it's just affecting our community now. And we see it with Method, uh, which is a big esports team. We see it in geek culture now. Uh, Mixer got a problem and now Mixer is out of business. I wonder why. A lot of predators have been called out, not just in Magic the Gathering, but in War Warcraft and esports, the whole the Mixer team itself and Microsoft. Uh, harassment is not cool, and now people are coming out and saying, hey, I was harassed. I told you I was harassed, and your HR department, including Method, did not handle it correctly. So we live in a very strange environment, but let me just say this. If you are, I believe in, I 100% believe in karma. If you try to destroy Teresa's life, don't complain when someone destroys yours later on. What you send out, you will receive tenfold. Bye, guys.